I know I wasn't supposed to buy any more large format cameras. And then last year happened. We were supposed to travel the world, my wife and I. So I wanted something small, light, that I could take with me, that I could just take one or two lenses, a couple film holders, and when we were gonna travel the world, I was gonna take this little Chamonix camera with me. This is the N2, and of course, what happened last year, don't need to tell anybody, the world basically shut down. We have not gone anywhere. We were supposed to go to Europe. We were supposed to go to Asia. We were supposed to travel all over the place, and I was gonna take this little system with me to take photographs. And I've had this now for uh, just a little over six months. I've shot a few small things with it. I really haven't shot anything uh, big with it yet or any big projects with it, but I've got to know my way around it. And so I'm gonna give you guys an overview of this camera and my thoughts on it. If you wanna skip to the end to find out, I'll save you that trouble. I think this is a fantastic camera. This is one of the best wood field cameras I have ever owned, and I've owned a lot. I have a, a Wissner camera, I've owned an Ebony, I've owned, uh, of course, you know, I own a Linhoff, I've owned all kinds of cameras, and this seriously is one of the very best cameras that I have ever used. So I'm gonna take a tour of it, and I'm gonna show you some of the photographs with it, and this thing is really fantastic. This model here is the N2. It's small, super light, weighs just over three pounds. It is made by a guy named Hugo Zhang. I hope I'm saying your name right. This is, this is, these are handcrafted cameras uh, made in China, and he makes a whole range from four by five to 20 by 24 camera, inch cameras. And he makes film holders and accessories. And seriously, this is one of the finest made instruments that I have ever come across. I wasn't sure about buying one. I had seen one briefly one time, but I kind of bought this one blind and I just ordered it and I figured if, you know, I was gonna use it for traveling and if it wasn't gonna work out, I was gonna get rid of it. But I don't think I will ever get rid of this camera because it's just made so well. It's so precise. The quality and the craftsmanship of how this thing is made is truly amazing. Just every, every part fits perfectly. The, the, the steel machine parts are perfect as well. And the wood, everything fits perfectly and it's super solid and it weighs nothing. For what I do, uh, which is traveling a lot and going in the back country and uh, even just my regular day-to-day -day work, this lightweight camera, but having it solid is really, really, uh, for me, just a little fantastic piece of equipment. From taking this out and setting it up, setting it up, as you can see, is really easy. You get it on the tripod. These back knobs control uh, loosening the back when it is closed up and you lift the rear standard and then you lock that into place. And then this front part, you lift that up and then you put it in the approximate hole for the lens that you're gonna use. So if you're gonna use a wide angle, obviously it'll go a little closer to the back. If you're gonna use a telephoto, it goes a little farther. The lenses on here, or the lens boards, it takes regular Linhoff lens boards. So I have a ton of Linhoff lens boards and from my Linhoff, it was just a natural swap to go in here. So that's really one of the pluses. To put a lens board on is quite easy. You put it in the bottom and it locks in. You snap it in and then there's two little uh, dials here that lock it in place on the top. And then your lens board is very solid. Again, there's zero play whatsoever in the lens board in the front standard. So the fit and finish is perfect on this camera. Once you have it set up to focus on the camera, at the rear here is the focus wheel and it is very, very smooth, very precise. The only thing I wish that this camera had 
is when you did get it into focus uh, at your focus spot, I wish that there was some way that you could lock the focus in place. So some little switch that you could move in that would prevent you from moving the focus back and forth. But the whole time that I've used it now, in retrospect, the whole time I've used it, I've never lost a photograph for being out of focus or have this move at all. It is uh, precise, it works very well. I just wish there was some little mechanism that would lock this focus in place and that it couldn't move once or once you had the focus in the right spot. You can pretty much get any type of movement you want out of this camera. It has all kinds of movements. Not that anybody does movements like this, but if you want them, they're there. The movements on this camera are great to do the rise and fall. You have two knobs on each side and they go up and they go down and then you tighten them that way. Underneath to get tilt, there are two little levers that come underneath here and you slide them out and then you can get your tilt here. But other than that, I don't use a ton of movements. Um, I shoot 4x5, I shoot it for the quality and for the look, especially in some of the portraits are that I do, it's, uh, I like having that large negative and making enlargements from that large negative. It's great to have the movement so that you can, you can correct everything or you can throw things out of focus, which this thing does. So this thing has all kinds of movements that uh, anything that you basically wanted except for rear rise and fall. To get your swing movements, you loosen the knob in front and you can do uh, full swings, really limited by the bellows, and you can do your side to side shifts. Likewise on the back, there are two uh, levers that lock the back in a 90 degree angle. And from there, when you uh, unscrew the knobs, you have 20 millimeters of rear tilt and front tilt limited by the bellows. You also have two knobs where you can extend the back or focus the back. So you can extend the back for more bellows length for longer telephoto lens and you can tighten those up. And of course with the same knobs, you can use that to do the rear swings as well. And the bellows here are synthetic bellows. You can switch them out for a wide angle bellows, but you can go as close as 52 millimeters or as long as 398 millimeters. So that there's a lot of bellows play in there, but I would really like to see a leather bellows. It would probably add a little bit more weight, um, but I'm, as you can tell, a little bit of an old fashioned guy, especially with my, my cameras. I would love to see a leather bellows. But these bellows are really good, very pliable. Uh, I put, I use my 90 millimeter four or five Nikorn here with no problem. So there's a lot of space and the bellows are really, really nice. The rear focusing screen here has a Fresnel lens on the top. It is super bright. This is one of the brightest screens that I've ever used on a large format camera. It really is fantastic. One of the other things that I like about this camera, which I use all the time, it has a level here, a level here, a level here, and a level on this side. It has all kinds of levels so that you can really see when you're working your camera that your back is level and then that your camera is level. So that's a, one of the things I really, really like on this camera. To switch out the back, there's two levers that you lift up, the back pops out and then it just slides in here and then you put these levers down and it's locked into place. Film holders go into the back super smooth really really well unlike any other camera that i've used especially when they're newer you have to really play with it a little bit sometimes they don't always seat in here properly this can be a little too tight the way he's designed this is absolutely perfect i mean you just open this up and your film holder slides in your camera never moves it is just a fantastic system
The other thing this back has is a graph locks back and you can just simply, uh, you take this, you can take your back off this. And of course, if you have any kind of graph locks back system, there's these locking tabs here and then you can use any kind of graph locks back accessory that, that you might have as well. Also know that if you have roll film holders, they easily can be accommodated. They have, he's made it so that there is enough space to use any kind of roll film holders. So this camera system is so adaptable and you can use so many different accessories on it. And last on the back, it actually comes with a ground glass protector that goes on it like that. And then you can travel with your camera and then your ground glass is always protected. Comes with the case and the whole unit runs about $1,100 US. Really a fantastic buy for what you get in this camera. Well, obviously I love this camera. I think it's so well built, so well made. This is this will last for years. I mean, the wood is fantastic. The metaling is absolutely superb. It is carbon fiber base. The whole thing is just built perfectly. The guy who built it is also an avid photographer, a mountaineer, so he gets it and he gets weight and what weight means, especially when you start traveling in the back country. A couple of things, like I said, I wish it had. I wish it had a lock me mechanism when you focused. And the other, really the only other thing that I wish it had is I wish it had a handle. I'd want a nice leather handle that went on top that I could grab it and walk around. Oftentimes on assignment, I will be walking around and I will you know, sometimes take my camera off the tripod and I will physically carry it around with a handle. So I would love to have this with a handle, but really those are the only two things that I think that is missing on this camera. Otherwise, it's really flawless. And from what I've shot in the past little while with it, it's worked perfectly in the field for me. I hope you like this little overview of this camera. Again, this is a Chamonix. This is the N2 camera that I have. And uh, you'll see more now that the weather is starting to turn a little nicer up here in Canada that I can go out. And also I've been shooting a lot with my 5i7 lately as you guys have seen. But now that the weather is turning a little nicer, I have some projects planned that I'm going to be using this for this summer. And I will take you guys along with me on that. So don't forget to subscribe. Hope you like this. See you next time. Stay safe. Cheers.